Welcome to People Love Process. In this movie, we're going to keep diving deep on creating and using the various vector brush formats to produce our design and illustration. Uh, this is the second movie of our two-part series, and I'll be focusing on specific type of brush styles and use multiple brush formats to pull them off in Adobe Illustrator. We're going to be covering spot texture brushes, scatter splatter brushes, love that name, uh, line work brushes, and grainy shading brushes. This is going to be a fun one, and we have a lot to cover, so let's get started. So the first format uh, that we're going to go back to is art brushes, and I use art brush format to create what I call spot texture brushes. This is, of course, better shown than explain. So once again, it can come from any type of source. Now, years ago, uh, when I worked at a design studio, this goes back to the, the mid 90s um, here in Oregon, they had an old drum based scanner, um, not scanner, a uh, copy machine. And once a drum would get kind of scrapes on it after years and years of making reproductive copies of whatever people put on it, um, it would develop lines in this drum scanner um, that was on this copy machine had these lines showing here. Now, I blew this up a little bit so you could see it clear, but these were running through any copy you made at some point. And this creates really cool textures. And so I'm going to uh, take one of these, uh, some of the elements found in this, and turn it into a spot texture brush. By the way, a few years back, I went to look for, and I went to actually... Um, a copy dealership here in town, and I say, hey, do you ever replace old drum-based uh, copy machines with digital ones? And he goes, oh, yeah, we do it all the time. And I asked him, I go, the next time you go to replace one, can I have the old machine? Because to make textures, it's really cool, but it's super hard to find. All the I bought an older digital one, and it was still too good. It didn't make great textures. So I ended up uh, giving it away to a business owner. But uh, yeah, if you ever run into an old copy machine, uh, just spend a few bucks and just Xerox the sky. That's the best way to see it immediately. Just open up the lid, Xerox it, and see what artifacts come up. And then you can see if it's worth even doing. But uh, that's where I derived this from, from an old Xerox machine from the 90s. I just happened to Xerox the sky, and it's been in my archive ever since. So we're going to go ahead and create some spot texture brushes here. This is part that I uh, created from that uh, kind of scrape drum of an old copy machine. So we're going to go ahead and op open up image trace here, and we'll select uh, the image we want to trace. Make sure to... Um, kind of declaps uh, advanced so you can see all these settings because you want to click on ignore white. Ignore white is going to uh, take the background element, in this case a TIFF image that's white, and it's going to make sure it doesn't trace that. It's only going to trace everything that are uh, black pixels um, or derived from black if it's a grayscale image. In this case, it's a bitmap TIFF, but um, if you check uh, ignore white, it won't uh, take uh, it won't basically image trace white as a vector shape. So that's what we want to do. Um, I'm also wanting to trace this really tight. So I'll bring the paths all the way to 100 and the noise all the way over to the left. This is all you have to do. Everything else I'll just leave by default. We'll click trace. That's going to go ahead and trace it. And again, if you have your control uh, bar set up in Illustrator, by the way, just go to Window. Make sure you have control because whatever you're doing at the time, it gives you shortcuts and it's a lot faster. Uh, for example, if you're going to align something, you can align it up here without having to find your alignment palette down here. So it, it's kind of a shortcut to do things. Once you've uh, traced it, you can just click Expand up here if it's still selected and it'll um, expand it into vectors. We can go ahead and uh, collapse the image trace now. Once again, we want to make sure we use the right kind of black. So if we go over here, as I discussed previously, we have an RGB black 
here, and that's good because right now we're in an RGB oriented color file. So that's the one we'll select this because it defaults to just a regular black. We'll make sure it's an inky black or the RGB equivalent black. In this case it is, and that's all we need. Now we'll just open up our brushes palette here with this selected, click plus, we'll select art brush, click okay. We're going to go to method and tint because you want to be able to have uh, you want to be able to color it whatever the path color is that will be the brush color and on this one we'll just go bad copier will be really unique everything else again we'll leave by default and we'll click ok and so that added this brush down here into those brushes so if we grab our paintbrush tool, we can make any color line. We'll just do a black one just here, and we'll go over like that, and you can see it creates that brush. So uh, super easy. Same principle as making a painted-looking type art brush, but in this case, it's a texture, and you can see several other ones I made here. This was um, derived from, like... Um, um, a cloth kind of rugged cloth texture showing through and then I image traced it turned it into a brush so that's going to make a great texture this was derived from uh, I believe it was like a cement wall and I just blew it out turned it into a brush and again this is going to make a good texture brush as well so how can you use these type of um, kind of texture brushes well uh, these spot texture brushes are great in the context of illustration. Now you can use them in design as well. Maybe you're doing a layout. It'd work for that as well. So just because I'm showing you an example of an illustration here, um, it could be a graphic design. It doesn't have to be illustrative. It's just I wanted something a little fun. Uh, this is an old illustration. This goes back, man, I think I did this in... 1999 for New York Magazine, they had a whole article, a series of articles on uh, subway rats and rats in New York City and what people were experiencing. You can see what's happening in this one. Uh, this is my favorite one. I did a whole series of them, like five or six um, uh, spot illustrations over about a week and a half's time. That was a lot of fun. And this is all I did at this time. I didn't do um, any kind of texturing. But I thought this would be a good one uh, to showcase an example of uh, how you can use them. Now, you'll want to make sure your layers, like we have our foreground of the guy and the scenery uh, here, and then we have the background elements behind it. So you'll want to do this because not everything's going to cover everything on top. And so that's what you want to consider. If you want to focus... Uh, the texturing in any area. Just use layers to compose and uh, work out what you want to do. So I think what I want to do is I just want to degrade the background. So the first thing we're going to go over, we'll grab this one here, and I'll grab uh, the paintbrush tool, and it'll, we will want to make this white. The fill doesn't matter. It's just the stroke color. Uh, will be uh, what becomes uh, the color used in your illustration. And all we're going to do here is we'll just paint this stroke like that. I'll select it. I'll go ahead and go to strokes. And that looks pretty good. I'll probably move it down a bit. Kind of like... And if you don't like it, just delete it and try it again. By the way, let's double click to see our tolerance is. It's, it's smooth. We're going to try going all the way to smooth like that, and then we'll do it again like that. That's not bad. I might want it to eat up uh, the edge, so I might rotate it just a bit. And if you want to, you can size it up. So maybe we go just a little bigger like that. And we'll just move it up just so it's eaten away some of that up there. That's fine. We'll go ahead and try a different brush here. Let's see. Uh, we'll try this one, which is based off of that material I showed you. And on this one, we'll go ahead and do it like this. Oops, looks like 
I had that selected when I selected the other brush, so let's try that one more time. Go here, like that. That looks pretty good. And that's all I'll do is I'll just make decisions. We'll grab any brush we need. And on this one, it's pretty easy. I'm not doing a lot of color because um, it's a simplified design already. So we don't have a lot of color in it. Um, all I'm doing here is I'm just trying to get some nice, authentic looking uh, kind of distress going here. And on this one, I don't even think it needs to be white. Let's go up here. We're going to color this one uh, a blue color. And we'll go to transparency. And this is where we can play with blend modes like that. I don't want it that overt. So let's knock it down by half to 50. I think that looks pretty good. I might even... I might even uh, Try it again, maybe make it a little closer. That's not bad. And if you want to, you can move it over. I want some of it to fall to fall off here. Let's go to stroke. I think it could go down a little bit. That looks better. And we'll use the same brush. Maybe we're gonna put some kind of spottiness in the background here. So we'll go like that. If you don't like it, just Command Z, do it again. That looks better. I think that's good. Maybe we do another one right here, but instead of blue, we'll go white. Make sure you turn multiply off because when it's white, um, you're not going to see it. It'll just disappear. Uh, maybe we do Another one, I, I'm kind of liking this brush, so I'm using this brush a lot. But again, you can you can use you can use any any brush you want. Let's let's change it up a little bit. So we'll go, we'll try this one. And I'll go this way just to get some distress down here. Don't like that. Let's do it there. I think that looks good. Um, but I think I want this one to be blue, not white like that and we might even bump it up one we can move it over like that that looks fine and then let's go i'm going to go back to this one but i'm going to change it to white and i just want to eat away some of the uh, background here so we'll just go like that don't like that by the way, if you have a Wacom tablet again, it's going to make uh, using this uh, a whole lot easier. And on this one, instead of a, we can drop this down a bit, maybe 1.5, something like that. And instead of this being 50%, we'll just knock it out 100%. So it really, oops. Make sure we're uh, adjusting the right thing. Instead of 50%, we'll go 100 like that. And let's try that one more time. There we go. Well, that's kind of weird. Not sure why it's doing that. Okay, let's try it again. So we have it at 100%. Now we'll grab the paintbrush tool. Okay, that was kind of weird. Not sure what I was doing wrong there, but you know, that's the way it goes. That's, uh, I <laughs> normally do that kind of stuff all the time. Uh, we'll, we'll pick another different one here in this one. Uh, maybe this line is pretty straight. So maybe we'll just kind of add some interest going up like this. And that's not bad. I think I like that better. And I think we'll go down a little smaller and maybe knock some of the value off, not a lot, maybe 70, just so it's a little transparent like that. And that that's, that's all I'm going to do to kind of add more interest to the background. Now, I'd probably go down below too, like uh, we have, uh, let's see, I kind of like this one, so... 
if I establish that and I go down here, maybe I want to add some of that into this area like this. But maybe since this is in, you know, the pipe work and it's a lot darker down there, we might do that. And we'll go back to multiply and multiply it. And then I'll just adjust the value. Maybe it's 55. And that's really weird. I'm not sure why it's doing that. It's like this shouldn't affect the stroke or the path applied to it. Like, there you go. That that was weird. It, it's like, for some reason, I never ran into that. But anyway, that's how I'd add some detailing there. If we go back to layers, you know, I do want to add some of this uh, type of detailing um, on the top, too. So we're going to do that. I'll go back to this one, I think. And we'll just make sure it's white. Uh, make sure multiply is turned off. And I'm not sure about the, the opacity, so I'll just stay at 100 for now. And we'll grab the paintbrush tool. And all I'm going to do is I just want some of this white flecking to go over some of the black. So I'll go down here like that. And that's, oh, that's way too big. Let's adjust the size. Once again, you adjust the size by adjusting the point size. So we're going to go to 75 here. And we're going to adjust the value. It's too strong. So again, let's see if it does it again. I'm going to go here and just select it. And we'll adjust the value. Maybe we do it to 40. So it's very... Oh, there it goes again. That's like really weird. I've never had this happen before. This I think this might be new to 2023. I had somebody the other day show me... Um, or no, not someone, my daughter... <laughs> <laughs> she was showing, she was trying to apply um, a Gaussian blur to a vector shape and it just disappeared. And I was at a conference and I said, okay, upload it, Dropbox, I'll download it, take a look at it. And it was happening on, wow, this is, this is weird. This, this should not happen. It's like, I've never, th this is the problem with Adobe. They do something, they tweak something and something kind of breaks or it doesn't behave like it's, behave for the last 20 years and then uh, whether or not they ever go back and fix it there so it's like you have to select it without the actual I don't know it's like some specific way of selecting it and if you don't it's going to do that that's just kind of bizarre I don't know why it's happening we'll put a little artifacting on top of uh, on top of um this part too. So going back to the story. So my daughter sends me this file and I open it up on my end and, and I'm running the latest AI on this brand new laptop I have. And it was causing me the same problem. It, it wouldn't show the Gaussian blur, even though it's there. And I don't know what they did, but somehow they broke that. And so I was struggling with, well, I mean, it upset my daughter so much because she had a deadline to get to and they're waiting and it wouldn't work. And she sent it to me and I'm going, well, she must be doing something wrong. No, she wasn't doing anything wrong. It just wouldn't work. It's like Adobe broke it somehow. And I'm thinking about it. And my friend Karen, who's sitting next to me, goes, uh, maybe have her try Feather. And if you've never tried Feather, Feather is kind of like uh, Gaussian Blur, just a little different. I think I'm going to knock this down so it's not so obstructive like that. So that's all I'm talking about in terms of um, texturizing it. Now, I'm in the middle of a story where I'm trying to show you this, so I'll hurry up and finish the story. Uh, so she, so I set up her file and, well, audited her file and first um, made a copy of it, then deleted all the unnecessary things she had in it which led to what she was finally doing. Um, and I kind of felt bad because I told her to keep track of that because I'm going to be doing a course on uh, character development um, for LinkedIn Learning. I wanted to showcase the process, much like I do here on my YouTube channel. And she saved all that. So I made a copy, took all that out, uh, made everything, uh, the feathering, to show her how to do it. Then she went in and did it on everything else, and it finally worked. But... Why Gaussian Blur broke, who knows? That's kind of how it goes with Adobe. So I think this looks pretty good. And if you make a, a really quick comparison, 
you have the flat art on left. That doesn't look by it. That's actually how I delivered the art back in, uh, I believe, is 1998 or 99 uh, for New York Magazine, and they ran it. It was really small spots, so that's why I kind of kept it super simple in terms of style. And then with the kind of texturing in it, just adds a lot of character. So a lot you can do uh, with uh, spot texture brushes. Here's another one. Uh, this was a, a lot of fun to uh, a lot of fun to create. And if I turn on uh, this layer here, this is how we could take a spot texture brush. In this case, maybe we take the one we created with the white lines. The, uh, that's the old scanner. And instead of coloring it white, we're going to color it black like the background because we want it to eat away. And then we can just go over areas. Well, this is set for really big. Let's make sure this is 100, kind of like that. And we wouldn't want it that big. We'll go here and we'll go down. And so you can do uh, this kind of work where it just looks like something scraped over your design. And you can grab... Um, anything here maybe uh you you want to uh, do a spot texture brush but instead of using an art brush you use a scatter brush so i'm going to select that up here we'll go to the paintbrush tool and again making sure color is the same color as the background this is where we can just go in and we can just start texturizing it and it doesn't matter this is kind of using a random kind of splatter like this and I think that looks uh, that looks pretty good. So there's a lot you can do with these. Uh, let's go ahead and turn on uh, this uh, spot texture here. You can see you can add white into it. So it really kind of starts, uh, it, it almost looks like parts of the design are breaking off into the background. And then here's all the spot texturing in place on this. And just just looks really, really, uh, really cool, I think. Uh, for a final design. Now, you'll need to expand it. You wouldn't want to give your client this as the final file with live uh, vector brushes because you're just asking for problems. But if you go to Keyline View, uh, Command Y, you can see all the brushes applied via the paths that they're mapped to on top of the base vector artwork, but you can expand it, uh, meaning you just select a, a brush and expand it and now all these elements are just um, simply vector art. So you could take this, let's say you didn't want it white, let's say you wanted it a red color, and then you could uh, print it in red. So um, a lot you can do with spot texture brushes. They're really cool. So in the exercise files for um, uh, this part two movie, you're going to find a whole set of spot texture brushes. Uh, all the ones I showed you in this movie, and you can immediately put them to use in your own projects, your own art, your own design. Uh, but I encourage you to create your own. All it takes is take your cell phone, go find a cool wall or old distressed building or fabric or concrete, literally anywhere you look. Um, I've gone to um, album music album stores and bought old album covers because the edges make really good edge texture. So a lot you can do, just use your imagination. And let's go ahead and jump to the next uh, vector brush format. The next brush format is Scatter Splatter Brushes. I love the name. Uh, this was a fun one. And by the name, you can probably tell the format we're going to be using, and that is Scatter Brushes. Now, Scatter Brushes are great for really creating something that's more organic because you can randomize it, and that's the beauty of it. So let's jump into this. We're going to create a Scatter Brush. Uh, we already have uh, several pieces of artwork here. The first one's a splat, almost like you stepped on a bug. This one is just kind of a almost a dithered scatter. And this is another finer uh, kind of uh, scatter. And I'll show you those. But we're going to create one from here. So we're going to select this. Uh, go ahead and open up Image Trace. And by the way, if you have some selected, then you go to Image Trace. It acts as if nothing's selected. So uh, don't do that. Just open up Image Trace, then select your element, and then it'll activate it. Once again, I don't know why Adobe does that, but that's the way it works. Uh, we're going to make sure Advanced is um, opened up. 
and we're going to move this to 100% and noise over here. And you might be going, well, you never do any other adjustments. It's because I found this gives me the most authentic results. Um, it's tracing it as high as possible. You can optimize it after the fact. Maybe we'll do that. And we're going to click ignore. So any white area in the image that we're image tracing, it'll ignore that. It won't create vector shapes, just the black base pixels. Once you have all those things set, go ahead and click trace. And in the control panel above, click expand. So if we look at this, um, this is going to have a lot of anchor points. If I expand this over here, we can go ahead and close image trace. Um, we're going to go to Passcribe. Notice this image trace has 10,332 uh, uh, 10,332 anchor points. That's quite a bit. And that's just one permeation of this. So if your path you paint out has five or six of these, that's over 70,000 anchor points. So if you do want to optimize it, you can. First, let's change it to an inky black. Once again, just to remind you, an inky black in this case is a process equivalent to RGB black. So that's what we want to select this art and go ahead and color it that. Now, if you're concerned about optimization, I'm not so concerned here. This machine can take it, uh, but I'll show you that really quick. With it selected, we'll go to object, we'll go to uh, path, and we're gonna go to simplify. Now, you won't see this menu if you've never done this before. It'll be a, a little, a little short a profile about this tall and that's it and you'll have to click into it to see this menu I don't know why they hit it like that it never used to be it would always open to this but I'm just letting you know just make sure you click this button and you never have to go through that again uh, by default it should always open up to this in my opinion these are the kind of little little foxes, the little irritating uh, problems that Adobe, for whatever reason, decides to do. Uh, so this is, right now you can see 10,332. If I leave it at these settings, this is kind of uh, simplifying the curves, 51%. This is moving it towards smooth, 55%. And by doing that, we cut off over 8,000 anchor points. Now, Will that uh, destroy the art? Well, if you look at it like this and you turn off preview and turn it back on, it doesn't look like it's affecting it too far, but it's really kind of hard to see. So I'm gonna click cancel here because I'm gonna suggest you'll want to zoom in this far like that. And with the art selected, then I would just kind of move it. Notice, by the way, if you, uh, we have it not to show those anchors, but as soon as you go to move it, it will. That just shows you how many anchor points. That's why I tend to turn off that um, uh, that preference when I'm working on here. Let's go back to object. Let's go to path. Let's go to simplify. It'll open it up because it's easier to see how much you're affecting it here. So if you look at this and we turn off preview, this is what it was. This is what it changes it to it's not affecting our art too much. And Adobe, I'll give them this, they improved this function because it used to blow big time. It didn't look great at all with any amount of adjustment. It just destroyed the art. They've kind of improved it and it does work pretty well now. So uh, this is a lot of improvement and less weight. So we'll go ahead and commit to that and we'll click OK. So we've optimized our artwork. So you can do that. Now we need to turn it into a scatter brush. So we'll click the plus sign on the brushes palette, select scatter brush, click OK. And again, uh, this is where we're going to have to randomize it and make some decisions and based off of um, how it's going to behave. And I'll be honest with you, the numbers I'm going to punch in are what I've used on other ones because the art's different. It's not going to look the same, even if I'm using the same numbers. It's because it's randomized. So every time you use it, it'll, it'll act differently. Uh, let's go ahead and name this one. We'll call this Organic Splat. And on all of these, we want them randomized. So we'll go random random and by the way you can see i have pressure showing up here because i do have a um 
a Cintiq I use on the machine, so it'll detect that software and it'll give me this possibility to select this. In this case, we're not going to do that. I'm going to save that for an um, upcoming movie just because it it really needs its own movie to focus on all the detail you have to, to do when using a device like this. Let's go ahead and go uh, 537 here and we'll go 187 here. We'll go 10% here. And on this one, we'll punch in 85. Some of you might be wondering, why don't you use the sliders? Because um, trying to stop on an exact number is like an exercise in futility. So it's just easier just to punch in numbers and try it that way. This one will go negative, minus 19. We'll go on this one, we'll go minus 46. And we'll go on this one, and we'll go 103. And we'll make sure that you can choose. In this case, it's not so critical. Um, you could do page and path. I don't find too much difference between the two. Most of the time, I usually select path. Uh, but you might want to try it on page. It, it, it really doesn't matter. Actually, let's just do page this time. And we'll see how it behaves. We don't like it. We can always go back and change it. Make sure you have tints. That will let you color it. With all that, we'll click OK. And the way it works, just like any other brush, whether it's an art brush or scatter brush, you can use the paintbrush tool. We can go over here. It's not this, the fill. It's the stroke uh, that determines the color. We'll go ahead and pick red. And then we'll just go ahead and go down like this. And boom, ooh, that's huge. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be that big. OK, we'll go back here like that. And I think something like that is more reasonable. You know, even smaller, that's that's pretty, pretty huge. But you can see how random it gets. So you can just paint it out like this. And next time you do it, it's going to look a little different. It'll be rotating and applying. Uh, again, you can choose any color you want. Maybe you go this way, like that. And the next time, maybe you use uh, multiply. And we'll go with uh, this kind of, uh, let's do orange. And you go this way. So you can get a lot of really cool looks and feels uh, using this. Let's go back. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I think I might like it on path better. And click it. And let's see what difference it makes go back here and oh that's right it's huge again let's go 0.75 probably 0.5 like that god even smaller that's like huge you know what maybe i will keep it on page but um this is where i might adjust it so uh maybe we do on this one, I don't know, 500 is a little big. Let's go 250, cut it in half, and I'll go 145. This is where playing with these is just essential. And we'll click OK. Now let's try it. OK, I think that's more reasonable. It's not freaking out. Um, so that's how you control it. By the way, I didn't plan that, so I'm just adjusting this on the fly. Uh, so that's how this brush is going to work. So we have uh, this brush here like that. And then if we pick this brush here, let's go ahead and go red here. Um, this is how this one works. Oops, it used the same brush. Make sure we're on the right brush and go here. That's how this brush works. And then let's select this brush and we'll do a nice green. And this is how that brush works, like that. So again, that's pretty huge. Let's go down to five there, something like that. So very randomized, very organic looking. A lot of anchor points, but that's OK. That should be expected when using scatter brushes. So we're going to focus on this artwork, um, which is a tribal design I created. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select this art, and I want the base color of what we're going to do, this color. Then I'll copy it. I'll go to this layer, and I'm just going to go Command-F to paste in place. But in this case, I'm going to fill it with nothing. 
and then I'm going to click on the Draw Inside button, and then we'll turn back on our base art and I'll lock that layer. So the blue will be the background of our artwork. And everything we're going to do is going to be on this layer that we've uh, selected for drawn side. And this kind of bounding box uh, that pops up is uh, denoting that we're going to be um, drawing inside the shape. All of that feature is, is it's automatically masking everything for you. Um, it's not some special thing. It just automates the masking process. So uh, sometimes it works. In this context, it's a great thing. Um, I usually control that because I don't want everything to be masked. In this case, everything we're going to do is going to be masked. Of course, our tonal family is this color. You can see it showing up here in the swatches palette. So I wanted to show you that. But the first thing we're going to do, we'll just go here and I'm going to select this brush, select the paintbrush tool. And we're going to start off with a nice red. So we'll colorize our stroke, this red color. And this is where I'll just start painting details in here and it's going to apply it like that. So I can select, I can go ahead and select this. If I want the size to be different, maybe it's a little big. Maybe we go down. It's, it's not too bad though. I don't want to go down too far. Let's actually, let's go 0.85. Yeah. I like that. That looks good. We'll go back to the paintbrush tool. Now, when you make a, a decision like that, it'll remember that and uh, you can just immediately apply it somewhere else. Maybe we want a piece there like that. Maybe we want it to go down this side kind of like that. Maybe we want to cut in by the mouth kind of like that. Maybe we want to change colors. Let's go ahead and go to orange and I don't know. Let's put some here, kind of like this. And this is where, if you want it to multiply, I can undo that, go to the transparency palette, select multiply. Not only is it going to remember this size and use this color, it's going to apply this multiply. So maybe we're doing this because we want it to interact with the colors underneath. And you can see when it does that, it interacts with that blue. So I don't think I'm going to do that because that looked like baby poop blue and that's not cool. So we want to, we want these colors to be pre-saturated. So I'll go up here. I'll do that. That looks okay. I'll go over here. Maybe it goes into the nose like that. We'll put a little area here. Maybe we touch it down here like that. Let's keep uh, working on it. We're going to do, let's see, we'll jump over and do aqua like that. And I think I'll go ahead and put some here and maybe a little bit in the, the eye area, kind of like that. Maybe we put some on the side of the mouth, kind of like that. Down here, that looks good. Maybe we go here. That looks good. Maybe a little up here as well, like that. And then let's see, we'll do, let's do green. Select green. I think we need some green down here. Oops, too much. Let's go like that. And then maybe right in the middle, kind of like that. Put some up here. So it's all, it's just, when, when I'm doing this, I'm just trying to figure out how to balance some of these colors. Uh, I don't want any one color to have dominance, really. I want it to all kind of balance well. Let's go to yellow. And on yellow, I think I'm going to put some here. I'll put a little bit down here. There's some right there. I'm there, maybe a touch at the top, something like that. And then on purple, we're going to do purple, but we're going to change our brush. We'll do the splatter brush. And I think we're on, we'll try 85. It might be a little big. I just want to kind of pull out the detail in the eyes. I want these to be dark so they really kind of show up better. So we'll go like that and, oh yeah, that's 
way too big. Okay, let's see. We're going to go down to 5. We'll see what 0.5 does. That's not, but maybe just a little smaller. 0.4, like that. Then we'll go ahead and paint in the eye. That looks good. I like that. We'll do this one over here. Maybe the bridge of his nose. And you can just touch to put one iteration of that brush. So if we go over here and I just go like this, maybe I want another one. This one gives you a little more control if you handle it that way. It doesn't uh, like add too much. We'll put some dark up here. I'm going to undo that. Maybe make it go, nope. Undo it again. I like that. So there is no wrong or right way to do it. It's just whatever you think looks good. Uh, maybe the, something like that. I think that looks good. Now, by the way, this is randomized, meaning all those random settings we did. So if you get something you like, you want to save it and then uh, make a copy and move from there. Because if you change it and you try to go back and apply the same brush and the same type of path, you'll never get it looking exactly the same way again. So that, that's something to keep in mind. And we can also obviously use this brush, not just for purple. Maybe we go, I don't know, back to orange. Let's put some orange like right there. That's too much. Yeah, like I like that. I like adding some splatters of color in it. So you can do that for any of the colors. This kind of needs some blue over here, I think. Maybe a little... All these are warm. Let's add some blue there. And maybe we touch up that area like that. So a lot of exploration you can do using drawn sight. Now to get out of this mode, let's say you're happy with what you've done, then just go back over the tool palette. You're still in it if this is selected. So just click the far left one. And now it's just acting just like it is a normal mask where if you select it, everything's masked within that, all those brushes that we brushed on. This is where I like to bring um, bitmap TIFFs as textures to work with it. So I've shown you this speckle before. I created this. Guess what tool I used to create this? I used an old toothbrush. So they, these are how you can utilize analog tools. Well, a toothbrush isn't even an art tool, but it doesn't mean you can't turn it into one. We're going to select it. We're going to apply, in this case, a fill, not the stroke. We'll apply a nice uh, aqua speckle to it. And I just like that it kind of has some of that color cascading into the, the negative area here. If we turn on this one, uh, this is the same speckle, just kind of rotated 180 degrees in this case. And we're going to add some yellow to this. And then we're going to adjust the opacity to kind of knock it out 60% of the value away like that, just to add a little more color. And I think this is looking really cool. So that's how you can use these uh, really nice spot texture brushes. And once again, just remember, they're completely random. So if you want to, let's say you don't like the way something looks, you don't have to go about and redo it. You could just isolate it like here, and I could isolate this. This is the purple that's in the eye. If I don't like it, I can go over here and just click the brush again, and it'll re-randomize it, and you can keep trying with each click something until you get something that you say, yeah, that's it, that's what I like. So you don't always have to rebrush it. You can just select a path and click the brush, and it'll re-randomize. But once you get something and you like it and you don't want to lose it, make sure to make a copy of it. So I'm going to show you another piece of artwork, the exact same artwork, exact same methodology, but you're never going to get the same thing twice. So this has a little different feel than this does. I actually like the one I did for this movie a little better. So uh, that's how using uh, scatter brushes and uh, scatter brushes... Um, will help you to create scatter splatter brushes. Uh, that name's a tongue twister. I probably should have named it something differently. Uh, so this is a fun one to play with to get those uh, 
really authentic looking. Don't over optimize them. That's the key thing. Don't uh, use simplify to make it more manageable uh, for your machine, but don't over optimize it. It'll just look like clip art and it'll look fake. Uh, these look very authentic because I didn't over optimize uh, the brushes when I image trace them. So uh, hope you like this one and let's jump in to the next brush format. The next type of brushes I want to go over are what I call line work brushes. Now, the two brush formats we're going to be leveraging to pull off line work brushes is pattern brushes, and we're also going to use art brushes. And you get the same effect using either, but it's never intended by Adobe engineers that you would use the pattern brush the way I'm going to show you, but there's a reason why I do it. So let's jump into the, the first one, and that is using uh, the blob brush tool. So I have this artwork up here, and I created it with the blob brush tool. Let's first turn on this, which is a guide, because you want to make sure that when you're creating this, it's perfectly horizontal because that's how a brush is created. So in this case, I would take this brush, I would go over here to the rotate tool, find an anchor point over here and click on it. And then that establishes the orientation. And then I would just visually move it. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you want it pretty straight. Now in between this and this, you want that pretty much aligned. Once again, this isn't a perfect pattern brush, so you don't have to worry about it in that respect from left to right. But up on the top and bottom of this shape, we want to do some editing. Now, before I jump into this, you might run into this where you have the bounding boxes now um, awkwardly positioned. Now, to correct that, just go to Object, Transform, and reset bounding box and it'll put it back to where it is. So if you've ever ran into that, that's how you fix it. Now, if I uh, command Z to get out of it, you can also just select the shape and go to Pathfinder and go Unite and it'll also fix it that way. But you might not always want to do that. So you can do it either way to get that bounding box uh, back into the correct kind of shrink wrap position around that shape. Now, this is where the blob brush comes in. It's kind of cool. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and, well, we want to make sure that this is an inky black. So if we double click into this, you can see we're using an inky black, which is an RGB black equivalent. We're in CMYK mode. So we're good there. Now uh, what we want to do is we want to use the blob brush tool. Now I'm going to double click into the blob brush uh, to uh, do some settings on this because I want this to be more accurate than smooth. So I'm going to bring it down here so it's more accurate. And we need to make a couple other, oh, I'm sorry, I'm on the paintbrush tool. I meant to grab the blob brush, which is right under it. There we go. Double click into that. And I don't want it smooth. I want it to be, uh, we'll just keep it accurate because the way I control it on the screen is the way I intend it to look when it's done. If it's smooth, it'll oversimplify things. And we don't want that. Now, these are the key settings right here in the top left of this uh, pop-up window. Uh, keep selected and merge only with selection. If you use it and you're using the blob brush and you want it to merge with this shape, this shape has always have, has to always uh, be selected in order to do it. And it will only do so when selected. It just depends on what you prefer. We'll go ahead and leave the size and roundness and everything down here. Pressure won't matter. We're not using a pressure sensitive uh, uh, tablet like a Wacom. Uh, so that's not if you're using a mouse, it'll just ignore that anyway. Let's go ahead and click OK. And what I do is I zoom in on a profile like this. And let's say I think this is a little too thin. I want it to be more organic. Then I can grab the, the blob brush and I can just kind of add to it like this. And you can see what it does is it fuses it to this artwork. So you can see it creates that. Now, if you don't want this inner one, you can just direct select it and delete it. But this is how, if I go to keyline view, it's still part of the same shape. And that's if it's selected. If I just grab the blob brush without this shape being selected, let's say I go up here and I want to add this part here. 
and I go like that, like that, and then I select it, it's going to be separate because this wasn't selected. So if you don't want to have to deal with that, just go back to, here's two iterations, go back to uh, the blob brush settings and click keep selected like that and deselect this, click OK. It's just going to be based off of your preferences. So if I'm doing this and I go like that, it's going to automatically, since I did it over the top of their shape, add to that shape. So if I go over here and I add something like this on the top here, maybe I want this to go up a little more and I fill it in, then it's going to keep adding it. So it depends on what your preference is. I kind of like this so I don't have to remember to always select it. Now that's how you add to it. Let's say you think the middle is too fat. Well, the eraser tool works in kind of the same way as the blob brush, but in reverse. If we double click on it, you can see it has somewhat of a similar interface and you can even have it pressure sensitive if you have a device over here. But the way I use this is this is if I want to take something away, I'll eat away kind of at it like this. And then I'll direct select areas I don't want. And that's how I'll customize a brush shape. Oops, see, grab the wrong brush. Grab the eraser brush, I mean, like this. So maybe I want this to get more thin and a little more organic. Okay, that looks kind of bad right there. Let's fix that like that. And you can see the eraser brush doesn't actually work as well as the blob brush in reverse. And I wish they would improve this so it did because it'll oversimplify at times like that. I hate, I, I just don't like that. So like that. So it's not perfect. Uh, I think the blob brush is excellent. I think the erase, eraser brush, let's say there are two uh, students in a class. Uh, the blob brush gets an A. Uh, the eraser brush, hmm, probably a C minus. Uh, so if I want it to really look authentic, I'll go back and I'll add little artifacts with the blob brush, you know, just to improve it because the eraser tool oversimplifies. So it'd be nice if they'd make that. So if you wanted it to be more organic, it would actually do a really good job. But I don't know. Don't, don't hold your breath. Adobe takes a lot of time to ever get around to fixing things. Um, I don't think it's broken. I just think it wasn't really thought through that well. And down here, this is an era one where I'll go to the eraser tool and I'll kind of clean up that bottom. I might go back with the blob brush just so it's not quite as nice like that. And I think that looks better. Let's zoom out. So I think we've improved it somewhat. I might go back here, but I'm not going to bother to do this. And the size you make the brush will determine the size the brush is when you apply it. So this is where you want to pay attention. And in this case, I might make a copy of it, bring it down here, and I'm probably going to size it down to right about there. Once I have that, we'll go to the brushes tool. And what we're going to do is we're just going to turn this into an art brush. So I'll click this. I'll click art brush, click OK. We'll name this one. Um, actually, I forget. We'll just call it, we'll be really creative. We'll go blob organic. Make sure to choose tints so we can color it. Everything else will leave by default. Click OK. Now you can see that's uh, been added here. We can select this path. Right now, this is like a red color. Maybe we go to a green color. We apply that to the path. And with any art brush, it stretches it over the size of the given path length. So if we uh, go back to the paintbrush tool, let's say we want to use the same brush that's selected. We'll change the color to this teal. Maybe we go shorter. Then it applies it to that shorter. If you go really short, it'll kind of mash it all up. If you go too long, then it'll just kind of uh, not be as or authentic looking because it's stretching around that, that whole length of the path. So that's the limitation to art brushes. And the reason why I'm pointing that out is because you'll want to keep that in mind 
as you're making your brushes. And this shows down here, I created this little brush set and it's all built the exact way I showed you up above, but I have one for long paths. I have one for uh, kind of medium length paths, shorter and really short here. And all of those work like this. So if I select this and I apply this long one to that, it's going to look pretty much exactly what I have there because it matches the length. If I take this one and I apply the second one, the same there. I apply the third one, the same there. And in the brushes palette, you can see this, uh, this fourth one is stretched out even in the brushes palette. But if we apply it to a shorter line, that's how it works. And so if you're going to use an art brush to do line work like this, you'll want to create different sizes to make it easier and more authentic as you use it. Uh, let's jump to the, the theme we're going to be creating here. This was my rough sketch, which was of a lion, and it doesn't need to be perfect. I cleaned up my line work, but I'm not going to be building vector art in a traditional sense. Uh, I just want to know what is going to be the path because that's what I'm going to apply the brush to. So if I create all my base vector artwork, here's all the paths here based off of that underlying drawing. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to select um, over here again, we have these four first brushes here that are art brushes. We're just going to start applying them. So I might take a long path here and notice how instead of this being connected to this, I separated them because that way I can select a larger one. And I know my larger one will look good applied to that like this. And by the way, all of these are um, just this magenta color. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select all of these paths and we'll just go ahead and make the color red. Then I'll select this. I'll make that that path. Then I might take uh, this little scale and I'll go the medium one. Maybe it's this one. If I don't like that, then I can try a different one. You can always go to the size. If you think the size should be smaller, we can do that. That's a little too small. So maybe we bump it up a little bit. I think that looks okay. I might even change this to the smaller size. I think that looks better. Then we'll go here. Maybe we pick the small one for that. And that's all I'm going to do is I'm going to make those kind of, um, those kind of decisions. I might go uh, to this one and select this like this, or I'll go over to, um, maybe it's his ear. We'll select the ear of the dragon and we'll map a medium one around that. Maybe we go to the inside of the ear. That might be the small one, or maybe we go one right above it. So that's all we're going to do is we're going to select these and apply paths to them. Uh, to get the look and feel we want, but we're kind of mapping them based off of the size that we created the brush. Uh, because you can see this one, even though it's stretching, it hits here and it goes here, that still looks pretty good. It looks like an authentic ink job, or we might take the, the base of, of the bottom here and we might go to a medium length. It doesn't always have to be the exact length, in this case, a long one, or we take this one, and we might apply that to it. Or we'll come down here and maybe we'll try the one we created. I think that's a little big. Let's go smaller. And that looks good. So that's all I'm going to do is go in on this, select a path, in this case on the eye, select probably a medium one. And I think that would look good. You can always try the other ones. I think that even looks nicer. So I'll go that way. And that's all I'm going to do is I'm working out the line work. Now, I'm not going to spend all the time doing that. It's not hard to do it, uh, but that's how I go about doing it. So once I have all of those applied, if I go to key line view here, command Y, you can see they're still all paths with those brushes applied to them. But look at how authentic it looks. It looks really, really awesome. Now, if I'm going to be giving this to a client, I wouldn't want to give them um, 
the artwork with all these live brushes applied to paths because, well, you're just going to be asking for problems. So if I go to this layer, which we have all the artwork here, and I select everything, and I go ahead and I go object, and I go expand, expand appearance, it's going to expand all of this. So now if we go back to keyline view, notice that all of these have been expanded into shapes. So if I select everything now and I go Unite, now it's going to work great um, in a client context. Does this look any different than non-expanded brushes? No, it looks identical. So it retains the exact look and feel, and I think this is going to look really cool. Now the final context here is for the Dragon Room Social Club. I think this type of style, especially the line work style, is really great for um, adding kind of drop shadows. So I might take this, Command C, Command F. I might color it gray like that. And then I'll just use my nudge keys, like four over, four down. I'll copy it, Command B, paste it behind. And I think it even looks cooler. I might nudge it over one, it might be a little too far like that, just to add a subtle drop shadow. It's really cool. Uh, this style also works great because there is no distinct area in this where is that's going to be problematic um, on a dark colored background. It's a style that's very uh, lenient and flexible when it comes to that. So if we turn on a dark colored background, it looks even cooler on a dark colored background in the appropriate context. So. Uh, that's one way you can create line work brushes. I want to dive into another one, but make sure you check out the exercise files because I have a whole set called Drag and Drop. Get it? Drag and Drop uh, uh, brush set in the exercise files. So you can uh, check that out and put them to use, but you can also uh, create your own and see what you can uh, do with them. So I just wanted to show you that. Now, the one shown on the left side, or what we're going to dive into next, um, I call these rough edge line work brushes. And so that's what I want to go over next. And it's the same general principle, but instead of using a blob brush, just think taking, um, uh, well, you could draw it with an ink pen, like a flare paper made black ink pen. If you wanted to do it that way, that'd be great. You just scratch a line and uh, use a flatbed scanner to scan it in, image trace it, boom, you got a line work brush. In this case, I just took a piece of texture and I just kind of squashed it, went in and roughed up the edge in Photoshop and image trace that. So I get this artwork and this artwork, I can just select once again, we want to make sure it's this inky black and then we're going to go ahead and create not an art brush. We're going to create a pattern brush. You you might be thinking, why a pattern brush? Because all we're going to use is the straight area. Although, as I should point out, this did an okay job with the corner, but we don't need it. So we'll just turn that off. Uh, that's the one and only time it's ever actually looked halfway decent. And we're going to name this one Rough Edge Line 7. And we'll want to colorize this, so we'll select tints. Everything else we'll leave as is. And notice this is just the straight area. We, we're not going to worry about the ends, either end or the inward corner or the outward corner. We're just going to deal with the straight and click OK. Because what we want to do is we want this brush, we'll apply it to that. And you can see how it turns red. Maybe it's a little shorter and it turns orange. Now, it'll mash it in order to fit on this one. This is the same size as the brush size we created. So this looks identical because it's identical size. Now, when we apply it to a path that's a lot longer, like this kind of uh, spiral here, we'll apply it to that. Notice what it does. It doesn't stretch that one iteration of brush. It repeats that straight pattern as if it's a pattern. It's really not. But it looks good. It doesn't look bad. And when I first tried this years ago, I'm going, well, geez, that 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 looks really cool. If I go even beefier, um, it looks great. And it doesn't look like 
it's repeating really. You can't really pick up on that pattern so much. And that's when I go, well, this is the best way to use it. Then you don't have to worry about a uh, super distortion with an art brush. And so I've been doing it ever since. Now you can take strokes, regular strokes. So if we look at this, here's a design, just all stroke based, not too interesting, just being plain strokes, but we can go ahead and select areas. Let's say we select the out, outward area here and we'll go over here and we'll apply this brush to it. Then let's go to the strokes here and we're gonna bump this up maybe by another point and a half, 2.5. And look how cool that looks. That looks great. And we'll just keep doing this. So I'm gonna go ahead and select, let's select this one. And we'll select this one here. And we'll go ahead and select this one. And ah, let's do one more. I'm just trying to figure out which, I don't want to apply the same brush to everything, obviously, but we'll do the cheek on this side. And so on this one, we'll pick a different brush. So let's go all the way down here and click on that one. That looks pretty good. Uh, I think we're gonna bump the size up by tw twice, like that. And then let's go ahead and select this one. We'll do this brush, we'll bump the size up on that as well. Then let's go ahead and let's see. No, I think I'll leave that. I kind of like that. So on this one, let's go ahead and do that color. We'll bump that up like that. Let's do this guy down here. Uh, we'll try the same one. And it's always gonna default to one. Um, it, it'd be nice if um, it remembered that as you clicked on a path, but it takes whatever the path is at the time and applies it. So we'll go ahead and beef that one up as well. And let's go, we'll start doing the cheeks. So let's select this one and we'll apply the brush. I think it needs to be a little bigger. We'll do that. We'll finish off this cheek. We'll change, we'll try this guy. And let's bump that up, needs to be beefier. Let's go over here. We'll take this one, we'll try this one. We haven't tried it yet. And now we'll beef that up again. Needs to bump up, take the inner line. We'll switch to this one and we'll beef that up as well. And then we'll take the inner one over here and we'll do that. And we'll bump this up like we did the side over there, like that. We have to do the nose. So maybe we do... Notice I have the top of the nose and the bottom of the nose. It's not just one complete path. So that's where I'll break it up, just because I don't want it to just wrap all the way around there. And especially with corners. Um, it'll stop at the corner anyway, and sometimes that might make it look a little odd, so that's why I do it. And on this one, I think we need to bump the size up here. Let's try 1.5, uh, maybe even a little more, 1.7. That looks good. We'll select this, and we'll do that one. And I'm gonna use the same size. Like that, let's go ahead and do the eyes. We'll do this one. Like that, bump up the size. And we'll do the one on the opposite side here. And we'll pick that one and bump that size up. Oop, I forgot the forehead. 
Let's do that and on like double it, something like that. And then this one, we'll do that and we'll bump the size up. And we'll do this one. We'll select that and we'll bump the size up. So I think that looks pretty cool. Now, if um, I, I just re <laughs> I just realized I screwed up, meaning I was going to leave this all uh, all the basic strokes so I could compare it when I got done. So I was supposed to apply these on the applying layer. Hence why I named it that, but I didn't. I did it on my simple strokes. So, oops, I was just going to do that on this layer uh, just so uh, I could make a comparison, but no big deal. We'll just use this layer to uh, to compare it. So uh, that's, what, that's what happens when I get too hyper-focused. Um, Man, I do that all the time. I do that so many times. It's not even fun. Okay, little side trail, little rabbit trail here. Um, I'll be working on something. I go, oh, I need to go grab this asset and bring it in. And I go to do that. And in the process of doing that, I might see an email or I see something load in the browser that's open on another uh, screen I have. And I go and click on it and I'll read a story or I'll respond to an email. And then I think to myself, oh, I need to get back to work. And I go back to my file and then I'm going, oh, I need that asset. And I do it exactly again. It's like, yes, I'm kind of um, ADD in that respect, but uh, that's my life in a nutshell right there as I work in the real world. Okay, so you've seen me apply these uh, rough edge line brushes uh, to just simple strokes that are colored, and this looks pretty cool. Uh, it looks a lot more interesting than this. Would you not agree? Yeah, it looks way more interesting, a lot more fun, a lot more organic, obviously. And so if I turn on all of them, this is what it looks like. Is this a lot more interesting and unique than this is? Absolutely. So you can start off with something pretty simple, just strokes, no fill, add the, the edge, uh, rough edge brushes, and you can create some pretty cool artwork. Now, again, I think I would take this, I would copy it, Command-C, Command-F, and in this case, we, we're using um, uh, this red in the background. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a swatch here get rid of that outline, color it the same red like that. We're going to go to color here and we're going to go in here and I'm going to devalue this, knock the, the saturation back 50% on both of these, kind of like that. On this, we'll go to three. And on this, I'm going to bump it up to, we'll probably do 45. So I've created a muted shading value. Why'd I do that? Because I'm going to drag this down into here, we'll go in here, we'll click global, click OK. We don't need this, this is just so I could see it um, interact. And now, since I have a copy of this, with all these selected, I'm just gonna go to stroke and I'm gonna color it that muted value. Now, I'm gonna nudge it using the arrow keys on my keyboards, I'll nudge it over, I don't know, one, two, three, four, over and one, two, three, four down. Then I'm going to go to transparency. I'm going to go to multiply. I don't want it that dark. We'll do, let's try half value like that. I'll copy it, select our art and command B to paste behind. And I think that looks even cooler with that little drop shadow in there of everything. So not super hard to do this. So also if you access the exercise files for uh, this part two movie, you're going to get access to the rough edge uh, brush set as well. Not just the drag and drop. Um, you also will get this one as well. So uh, let's go over the very last brush type that I want to go over in this movie. 
And the last brush is arguably one of my favorites, and I like to refer to them as grainy shading brushes. Now, that's a pretty literal name, and you're going to see that. But before I jump into the specific topic I'm going to be utilizing this brush in, um, I kind of walk you through the steps because I don't just start off with immediately doing brushwork. That gets to a point where I'm approaching color in detail. And in this case, the theme I'm going to be focusing on is an illustration of a tiger. And I had this idea of a tiger on a prowl and he's walking straight towards you. And I need to look up reference because I don't have the luxury of going to an animal park and kind of studying how they walk. Uh, but these were two really good photographs that kind of gave me the insight. I love how his paws kind of uh, cross over on the front. So I'm going to be picking that up. This is how I started doing my rough composition of that tiger in the background, really crude background. Uh, I never start off clean. I'm just trying to work through ideas and figure out what I want to um, actually do. Obviously, I get it to a point that's a, re a refined drawing. In this case, this one's already been um, kind of adjusted for opacity to build from. But obviously, I get it to this point, And it's at this point that I'm just... Um, creating something I can use as a roadmap to build my vector art. So I'm thinking in shapes, thinking as I go to Illustrator, how am I going to build this, scan it in with my flatbed scanner, save it as a bitmap TIFF, place it into Illustrator, adjust the opacity, in this case, maybe 15%, lock the layer, and then I build my basic shapes on top of it. Uh, using combinations of shape building and also pin tool building. You've seen me demonstrate this in many movies. This is just the, the systematic process I use. Um, I have an idea of color in mind, especially with the tiger. I'm thinking your classic uh, bangle type of tiger that has a nice golden orange color. So with black stripes on his body, uh, some white on his face, uh, so on and so forth. And I'm going to carry through with that with the color. But I just wanted to show you a few of the steps of how I got to that point. Now that I'm at a point where I've figured out the base coloring of my tiger, and I can show you that really quickly. We'll get right back to that. Um, I first want to focus on the format we're going to be creating in terms of shading. So let's zoom in on these because we're going to turn these into shading brushes. And the specific format we're going to use once again is pattern brushes. So I'm going to turn on the brushes here, and we're not going to concern ourselves with the corners or the ends of a pattern for a pattern brush. We're just going to concern ourselves with the straight. If you look at these brushes here, I have this long run. If I copy it and just move it over and just snap it to the left side, you can see what that looks like. I'll cl clone it, copy it, move it over, and I'll snap that to the right side. It's just going to seamlessly repeat from left and right along the path, just like an art brush, it applies to a path, takes on the color of the path, and the size of the path determines how large or small it is. But this will repeat side by side. Top and bottom don't matter in terms of a pattern brush, just side by side to repeat endlessly. That same principle applies whether it's a long brush, whether it's a short brush. Now, I created a short one because sometimes I want that detail, but the path I'm applying it to is a short one. If I try to apply it to a, a long brush to a short path, it'll squish it and distort it. So this allows me to get that same look and feel without the distortion by creating a short one. I also have one that has the graininess on the top and bottom because for certain contexts, this might be great as well. And ultimately in my final art, I did use that and I'll point it out. So let's create a few brushes here. Obviously we're using our equivalent to RGB black or inky black. We're using in inky black because we're in CMYK mode here. So I'm first going to go ahead and select the small one, click the plus sign on the brushes palette, select pattern brush, click OK. We don't need the auto generated corner. I wish I could, there was a checkbox to say never show me that because I do it. We change the colorization method to tints and we're going to name this one and we'll call it grainy brush short. 
obviously, and click OK. And you can see it's added it or there. Now we'll select the long one, hit the plus sign, select pattern brush, click OK, get rid of the auto-generated corner. Thanks for wasting my time, Adobe. And we will name this one grainy brush long. And then we'll select the colorization method of tints. Everything else can remain default. Click OK. And we've added that in there too. So how does this work? Well, it works. Let's go ahead and switch over to the tiger that we have all the base coloring on. And I should point out, if I select the head, it's all grouped as one element. And I have the legs that are going up underneath it. And this background leg, we have a foreground and a background leg, um, his front two legs. This one's further behind this leg and both are behind the head. And the head sits on top of the body here which is separate as well. That just makes composition and controlling detailing a lot easier if you think it out as groups like this. And once again, any of these I can click into and it goes into isolation mode, as you can see up here. It's kind of hidden by these palettes, but that allows me to go in without adjust or without accidentally moving any of the other elements. You just double click the background to exit it. So we're gonna be using this shading value this is just a darker hue with some black added to it on top of the base color green of the body here. And this is going to act as our shader, our shading value. If I go ahead and select multiply like that, you can see it's uh, changed the color and I knock the value down, let's say 45%. You can see it creates a nice shading value. And we can adjust the opacity if you want it a little darker, or a little lighter um, as you apply the brushes. But the brushes we created, we're going to go over here and we're going to select this short one like this. And let's go ahead and make sure, I don't know, let's do just regular orange for the stroke. No fill like this. It's going to remember our settings here. So let's turn those off normal and just go 100% value. And now if I take the paintbrush and I paint out, you can see it applies it that way if I go left and right. And if I go the opposite way, it applies it the opposite way. So remember, that's how you change the, the orientation. So now we're going to put these to use. Now that's the short one. If we do the long one, same principle, same methodology, it's just longer. So if I do a short one, it's going to smash it all together. That's not going to look very good. So now we're going to go ahead and add some detailing. We'll start off with the long one. So let's zoom in on this leg because this is the first one we're going to do. And all I'm going to do is select the brush. I'm going to go to transparency and I'm going to select multiply because I do want it to multiply. We'll select the paintbrush. We have the brush selected. We need to select the color. So all I'm going to do that, I'm just going to select this. That establishes the color and the opacity like that. So it's multiplied 45%. It's using the shading value. We're just going to apply it to the stroke. We don't need it to be part of the fill. But it will remember these transparency settings. And with the brush selected, with the paintbrush selected, we'll go ahead and focus on this leg and we're going to put some shading that goes on the right hand side of this leg like this i don't like that and by the way you might want to go in here and we have it on smooth that's fine if it's all the way to if you have it on accurate you're going to get too many anchor points you don't need that so um that's how you control that so i would go Something like, well, let's apply. It didn't remember the settings, so let's go 45 like that. Oh, it's doing that thing again. Eh. I don't know what Adobe changed, but they kind of overcomplicated. Uh, this is nuts. Let's say, what? Why? Why, Adobe? Why do you make my life hard? Okay, 
So maybe it's you don't touch the path. No. Did it do it there? Okay. Wow. That's like, I've never seen that before. That must be new with um, the latest version. I do use the latest version on my recording station here in my recording booth in my studio. Um, but that, that kind of sucks. I don't know why it's that difficult. It really, it's never been that way. This is like a new thing. So I'm experiencing it, but it's good because on my workstation, I don't update to the latest right away. Um, I probably should check this out because they've, Adobe's done this so many times, it's kind of getting old. So I'm going to beef it up. It was one point. I think it looks a little better if it's a, a little beefier like that. And so I'll just position it where I think it looks best. Some like right about there. I think that'll look good. And then I'm going to go ahead and let's say um, this was the one, this is the brush I created. Maybe I want to use another brush and I have a couple other ones in here. I could also apply this one, but that would go the opposite way. So I wouldn't want to use that, but maybe you want it more grainy. So I could use this one. That's nice. But we'll go ahead and just stick with the, the one we created here. Um, I think that's going to work. And notice how it's getting a little distorted here. This is where you can go in and you can just adjust it like this. And this is where I might even remove an anchor point like this. And this is where having a plugin comes in because I can just go smart remove and it'll remove it. And look at that. It makes it look better. So you want to have the least amount of anchor points um, in a path because it'll distort stuff if you have too many. Uh, so that's how I would create the shading on that side. And if you think it's it's too dark, you can always go in. In this case, maybe we bump it down to 40% if you think that looks even better. So it just depends on uh, what you're trying to achieve. Let's go to the next one. We'll go ahead and take the brush tool. It's going to remember the settings the last time you did it. Uh, so what I want to do now is I want to create a, a kind of a cast shadow created from his head on his leg. So I'm just going to go just like that. And this is a case where it's a shorter path. So guess what? I'm going to use the shorter brush and I'll just redo that. So I'll go ahead and go like that and look at how much nicer that looks by using the short one. You don't get that distortion. That's why I have both. Now where it overlaps this other one, you're going to get a, a darker shading and that's fine because that tends to be where the darkest shade would be like that. So I think I'm going to leave this as is. We might make it even a little darker since it's it's not, this is out in the open area. So this would be a lighter shade than this. So we'll add another 10% onto that one like that. So this goes from 40 to 50%. Uh, let's go ahead and do another one. We'll do another one. Um, I'll go back to the large one here. And we want this to kind of add some more shading uh, value here. So we'll take the larger one, grab the brush tool and I'll just wrap it around kind of like this. But notice it's kind of distorting because we're using the long brush. So again, I go back to the short one and I would do it like that. And that looks way, way better. So that's why for the long distance ones, you'll want to use the long brush for the short distance kind of detailing. You'd want to use um, uh, the, the shorter one for sure. Now, we don't want to leave it like this, obviously. So this is where I'd select uh, his leg shape and I'd uh, copy it, Command-C, Command-F. That brings it to the front. Let's go ahead and just apply an outline to it so you can see it's sitting on top like that. And with that selected, we're just going to go ahead and select the brushwork that we did here, those two, and we'll select this one. And we're just going to go ahead and mask it like that. Now, I use my keyboard shortcut. So let's undo that because I'll show you how to do it if you don't have keyboard shortcuts. We'll go to Object, Clipping Mask, Make. Notice I have uh, 
um, I have the F key here. I actually, it's the F1 key. For some reason, it's not showing one. That's kind of odd. Uh, but I just hit F1 and it will mask it into that shape. Once it's masked, then I'll copy it to the clipboard, select the head, and I'll go Command B to paste it behind to put it in the proper orientation. Now, if you've already masked something and then you determine, oh, wait a minute, I need to uh, create the shading or the highlight on this side and I didn't mask it, that's okay, it's no big deal. Uh, just go ahead and grab the shading brush you're gonna use. In this case, we'll use the, the short one again here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and select white for our color, select the, the blob brush, or I'm sorry, the um, paintbrush tool, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and brush down this side like that to get the white. I might do that over again. I think it should kind of wrap better down at the bottom like this. That's better. Like that. And I might move it over kind of like this. And I want this to taper out. So this is where, since it's on a path, you can adjust it. And I think something like that would look good. And I don't want this at 100 value. I just want it to be a nice light tint. So ah, 20 is not enough. Let's try 30. And here's that same problem. So instead of selecting the path, we're just going to hover over this, click. Then we're going to adjust the opacity. Wow. See, uh, there's no reason why it should act that way i don't know why who why they even change well to be honest with you i don't think it's something adobe say hey, let's change this and change muscle memory that's been around for 20 years i think it's they changed something and it affected this i think it's a bug in that respect i may be wrong maybe they they did change it who knows um purposefully but i really don't there's no reason why they would do that, in my opinion. So now I'm going to go ahead and copy this. We'll click on what the mask area is, double click to go into isolation mode on it, and just Command F to paste that in place. Then we'll click out. And now that is masked as well. So uh, you don't have to all do it at the same time. Now that I'm looking at this, I'd probably adjust this even more. I might even remove this anchor point like that and then that would make adjusting this one a little easier i think and because we have this pulled out so much i think it'll look better if i adjust it like that so again this process isn't hard it just doesn't go super fast uh, to do that kind of detailing on that so I'm also not talking to people as I'm doing it. I'm usually listening to an audiobook, uh, but that's how I'd handle that kind of detailing. So let me turn this on and we'll turn on uh, the final detailing here. And if I zoom in, you can see all the detailing I did on here like that. So you can see how all that came out. If I zoom in on his head, you can see how I put all that detailing on there uh, using uh, grainy shading brushes like this. All of this has been um, expanded because I wouldn't deliver it to a client unexpanded. Uh, but let's turn on some of the other elements like the background. So we have the background foliage here. We'll turn on the tree. We have a nice bush, this bush. We have some more floral blossoms and we have some colorization in the background. So this is what he's coming out from. He just jumped over a bush in the background, and now he's walking straight towards the viewer. I put some nice lighting effect into it just to make it fun. And because I love texture, we're just going to select this, and we'll go ahead and align it to the artboard here. And this is where I would put um, uh, some nice shading uh, in this as well. And I usually what I do is I try to figure out a color that isn't represented a lot in this. In this case, I think we could, I think orange is the main color here, but maybe we go in here and we pick, I don't know, 
an unexpected color, like maybe it's pink, and we just adjust the opacity so it's transparent as it uh, flows over everything else. So uh, little artifacts like that are nice, or maybe it could be white, so it's like little art. Ooh, I like that better. So almost like atmosphere, like there's dust in the air or whatever. So a lot of things you can do like that doesn't always have to be vector. That was a speckle brush derived from an old film plate. So let's dive into another uh, way you can use these. Let's turn on Mr. Mustache so you can see what he looks like. And all we're going to do is we're going to do some detailing on Mr. Mustache. And this is a good one you could practice with if you want something a little simpler. So all we're going to do is we're going to uh, utilize some of the brushes that were in the file to begin with. So we have this one. And uh, this is from a different brush set that I created called Big Grainy 1. And the next one's Big Grainy 2. So really, um, uh, really appropriate, <laughs> appropriate names. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and use Big Grainy uh, 1 brush. And we're going to apply some detailing to this character. So let's go ahead and select a nice uh, kind of muted color here. So, or actually... We'll do a highlight on his head. So let's go ahead and select that white for the brush. Uh, let's beef up. I think I want this to be quite a bit bigger. So we'll go three and we'll use that brush. And I'm just going to draw all along the side of his head, kind of like that. And I was drawing on the wrong layer. So let's try that again. Okay, that looks pretty horrible. Once again, make sure if you go into the brushes palette, okay, that's fine. Um, I, keep in mind, I'm doing this with the mouse. If you have a Wacom, so much easier. Like really, really, really so much easier. And well, I'm gonna call that, ah, that's not that bad. That's okay. I don't want it 50%. Um, I want it in a lot lighter. Let's try 30. That looks better. So we have a nice little uh, highlight there. Uh, maybe we want to do another one. We'll do um, we'll do a shading one. So let's do uh, let's go ahead and pick out a nice shading value. Probably we'll try this shading value here, and we'll use the same brush, but we're gonna uh, go down the right hand side. So we'll go over here like this like that. And this is where I might pull it around just so it wraps around a little more and maybe a little bigger or a little smaller. 2.5 like that. And I'm just going to move it over. Yeah, like that. And bring that down around something like that. Now, this is where I go to transparency and I go to multiply. And I think, what's our opacity? 30? I might go maybe 20 or so. That looks good. And then I'll just use the exact same, uh, the same settings just because I want a shadow under his hat. So I'll go like this, like this. And by the way, the direction I'm going, if I went this direction, you'd put it on the wrong side. So you always want to pay attention to the orientation. I don't like that. That looks pretty good, but I want it a little darker. So we'll go 45 like that. Once I have that, I'll select the face make a copy. This is what I'm going to use to mask it like this. Make sure that's on top of all the brushwork we did. Then I'll mask it. Then I'll cut it. And I want it just to go behind the mustache over here. And then I'll go paste behind. I think that looks pretty good. I think we need some 
just realized I uh, I don't want it to go. Hmm. I'm going to undo that like that because it's doing this over here, but that's OK. We can just select the mustache. And this is where building on separate layers makes it easier, in my opinion. But I'll just move these to the front on top because I didn't want to lose that highlight or that shadowing as it goes under the brim of the hat over the nose. We kind of lost that. Now that I'm looking at that, that's a little dark. So maybe 35, knock 10 off of it. I think that looks better. Let's do a couple more. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll do some shading on his nose. So we'll use the same brush. I'll go ahead and change it to white, no multiply, and maybe, I don't know, let's try 20. And now I'll go ahead and grab the brush like that. That looks pretty good. I might move it over just a little bit. And then on the opposite side, We'll pick a different color for the nose. And I'll go, oops, let's do it a little uh, darker. We'll do 40, like that. And we'll go multiply so it interacts, maybe 30, like that. I like that, but let's change to, um, Here's, we'll, we'll go ahead and use this one here, and we'll use this for the bottom of the nose. And I'll just go ahead and go like this, and that looks really bad. <laughs> okay, I, will, I guess I won't use that. I'll just stick with the one we use. Well, I am trying to wrap it around there, so you should probably do a larger one like that. Something like that. That's close. This is where I would smart remove these. And I would change this something like this. And then move this inward just to get something like that. We could always go back and explore this. Yeah, that looks really bad. Let's try this. Yeah, nope. I think we're going to stick with we're going to stick with that one. Uh, we'll take the nose. We'll make a copy of it. So again, these methods really aren't hard, but uh, the process uh, doesn't distinctly go super fast. Uh, but the results you can get are kind of cool. So I think that looks pretty good. I might adjust this one. Move this over. You know, something like that, I think, looks a little better. Let's go back to layers. So the flat vector art, here is with the background. And if you take your time, you don't try to explain it to people like I am in this movie. Uh, it will go quite a bit faster, but it's still not going to go super fast. Uh, but you can get some, turn something like that into something like this. So you can get a lot of cool look and feel. Uh, by playing with these, I encourage you to play with them. Now, back in the day, um, I did um, some artwork for Adobe. I call it the Adobe Dragon. Uh, you might have seen it on their site at one point, but it was all about uh, these kind of brushes I'm showing here. And I did this artwork. And if you ac ac access the exercise files for uh, part two movie, you're going to get access to these grainy shading brushes. So you'll be able to use them in your own project. And I encourage you to explore and develop your own as well. Between part one and part two, you now have everything needed to develop your own custom vector brushes in Adobe Illustrator. So I encourage you to explore and experiment with the methods I've shown. 
and see what you can create yourself. That's where it gets really fun and you find unexpected usages for it as well, especially when you're developing brushes. Remember, you can access nearly 175 custom vector brushes included in the exercise files. Whether it's part one or part two, just head on over to the link in the movie's description below and you can get access to the exercise files. They include the source files used in the movie, the various sample artwork I've showed, uh, and this will allow you to further deconstruct how to use custom vector brushes by studying how I layered, use blend modes and opacity settings to achieve the final results. A big thank you to those who purchase my exercise files or become a member of my channel or send me a super chat. It all helps me dedicate more time in creating new content for this channel. I appreciate those who have and always thank you for commenting and sharing my YouTube channel with others as well. Until next time, thank you for watching People of Process. And as always, I really do hope this content helps you to improve your own creative process.